So here's the situation. I finished upgrading the ROM in my Amiga 2000 and had just put it together enough to do a boot test. It wasn't booting and I noticed the power LED on the SCSI 2 SD was flashing. So I shut it off. I then discovered my error. I failed to plug in the power supply to the power splitter so the SCSI 2 SD and GoTek floppy emulator were sharing power. Power from where? The SCSI bus. Yeah, not good. Let's plug that in. The computer still doesn't boot. In fact, the, the SCSI LED is on solid. As you can probably see here if I move the camera a little bit. Removing the SD card from the SCSI 2 SD does allow the computer to boot, so let's do that. Pop out the SCSI 2 SD, and I think we're going to have to go through a power cycle here. You can see the controller is now probing the SCSI bus. It may not show up on camera, but it's actually flickering the SCSI access ID. In the interest of saving time, we're just going to cruise by booting from floppy here. Let's see here as it begins to boot. There, we've got some stuff going on on the screen now. And it booted from floppy. Luckily, I've got a spare 2091. And after swapping all the socketed chips with those of the spare, the problem stayed with the A2091. But we've at least cut the problem in half because this controller still works with all of the chips that I pulled out of the failed 2091. One thing of note is Diode D1, you can see right here. Diode D1, it uh, provides SCSI termination power. I started by checking that. With the SCSI 2 SD connected, I measure a bit over 4 volts. There should be some drop due to the diode, but not that much. After replacing the diode with an 1N4148, the voltage is now about 4.6 volts. Uh, I think that's, that's better, and unfortunately though, the card still doesn't boot. So we know it's not one of the major chips. Now let's take it to the bench and see if we can figure out what the cause may be. All right. Uh, so you can see here the diode I removed earlier from the board. Replace that right here. Let's give it some power. Just connect to the ground. And I'll use the side of the diode that I know is 5 volts. Use the clamp on of that. All right, it's drawing about it's drawing about 0.42 amps right now. So I measure with a voltmeter. We've got 5.05 volts coming into it, and 4.818 coming out of the dial. Of course there's no load on the dial right now and that's probably why it's so high. So just by proximity we've got three components here that are not socketed. We've got uh, U10, that's a 74LS08, U6, which is a 74LS86, and U7, which is a 7407. Now looking at the schematics, one of the items that stood out to me was this 7407. Pin 4 connects to pin 40 on the SCSI bus. Looking at the SCSI bus connector, all the rest of the signals go to the major chips that I've already swapped out. Well, unless you count components like resistor networks. Pretty unlikely that uh, one of the resistor networks would have a problem. Okay, let's investigate the 7407 and specifically pin 4. 
let's just take a look and see if maybe the driver got blown in that trying to supply current over pin 40 across the SCSI bus to my SCSI SD. Back to the board. So I'm going to start with U7, the 7407. I still have power applied. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at pin 4. Count here. 1, 2, 3, 4. What do we see? We see 3.043 volts. Well, for a TTL device, that's a little bit odd. Check on another one of the pins here. And in fact, I'm seeing weird voltages all the way around. Just as a check, one more time, we'll check the other side of the diode, 4.8 volts. So I'm going to suspect this component that's bad probably was overcurrented by the SCSI 2SD. I'm going to go and socket that and hopefully find a replacement for it. I have to start by applying liberal Kapton tape on the component I'm about to replace protect everything else on the board. And back side. I don't know which component we're going to hit here. All right, that's pretty clear. And before I start desoldering, what I like to do is apply some fresh solder. I'm not trying to be very careful about this. I'm just trying to make sure I get all of the, the joints heated up. Some fresh solder. Alright. Next step is I'm going to use my desoldering tool. And remove some solder from the joints. That looks pretty good. Looks like I've got most of them loose. One or two of them is not, however. So I'm going to hit it with some hot air. A little, little bit of flux down as well. In fact, let's just flip it over and we'll do it from this side. Okay, it's starting to come now. I can feel it moving. Use it out. All right. 
So now that that chip is out, and check the holes and see if I need to clear the holes. No, I'd say that looks good. So next step is going to be cleaning it up. Now I'll put the new socket in. One thing you want to make sure of is that you align the notch in the socket same direction, same orientation as where the chip previously was aligned. All right, got it in the socket. I'm going to solder it down. I like to use a little bit of putty to hold it in place. People have various means. Some people use masking tape. And we'll do one pin at a time. Get our anchor pin first. All right, anchor pin's in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the putty off and go back and make sure that it's fully seated by pressing on it while I heat up that anchor pin. Okay, that pin is down. Do the same thing in the opposite corner. That pin is down. For the rest of these, I'm going to apply a little bit of flux. And we'll go to town. So the tough one is always the ground plane. Handle that one first. Done with the socket, time to clean that up. Alright, I think that's looking pretty good now. Leave the cap on tape. Let me see me zoom in a little bit on that. So on the other side of the board. Alright, time to place the New component. This is an SN 7407. No idea if that will show up on the camera. And again, we want to align the notch on the component with that of the notch on the header. Now, let's put that back in the Amiga and give it a shot. 
I'm installing the 2091 back in the Amiga 2000. Making sure to get the SCSI cable the correct orientation. Always your stripe goes down. We connect our LED. And let's see what we get. Okay, we can tell we got hard disk activity. Looks like it's gonna work. I'm amazed. It appears that the replacement of the 7407 actually worked. And we're booted. Awesome. Now I just need to put the original chips back on the board. Because remember I was running with the working chips from the other 2091. And uh, we're good to go. That went easier than expected. I guess my takeaway from this is to always make sure that the SCSI 2SD is connected to the power supply before powering on the computer. Thank you for watching another episode of my amateur adventures in vintage electronics.